Hello everyone. Well, hopefully you've tuned into this video because you've got a shark upright vacuum similar to this that's not performing as it should. It's losing suction. It's not picking up those pet hairs the way it did when it was new. Hopefully by the end of the video, if you follow my hints and tips, you'll have a fully working vacuum again. Okay, I'll start the video by doing some routine checks and then I'll show you where the filters are, how I wash them and some other things you can do to maintain the performance of your Shark vacuum. This particular model is an NV680 but it's also very similar to the NV681 and also the True Pet versions. So if your Shark Upright Cleaner looks like this, most of the things I'll be showing you should be relevant to your model. The most obvious thing to do is empty the cleaner on a regular basis and try not to go over the max fill line. To remove the container, simply pull up on the dust cup release buttons. To empty the container, simply press the button at the bottom and empty the dirt into the bin. To empty any dirt that's been caught in the top of the bin, you can press this button here and hinge open the top and tip out any debris. The only maintenance you should need to do on the bin is to keep it emptied and ensure that the mesh screen is clear. If you want to give it a more thorough wipe out, you can do. I wouldn't submerge it in water, but you can use a damp cloth and give the whole inside of the bin a wipe. Or I recommend antibacterial surface wipes because they don't wet the machine too much. You can wipe around all the parts, make it smell a bit fresher and look a bit cleaner. But that's optional, obviously. The most important thing is to keep the mesh screen in the middle free of any debris. The filters are like the lungs of your vacuum cleaner. If they become clogged up, it reduces the airflow and reduces the pickup efficiency. In most Shark Upright cleaners, the pre-motor filters are located directly under the bin and you can see them every time you remove the bin for emptying. Now Shark recommend cleaning these every three months, but that depends on usage. Personally, if they get very dirty, I would clean them on a more regular basis, perhaps once a month. To remove these filters, you just simply lift it out and you'll find a two-part filter here consisting of a sponge this one isn't too bad, I've seen far worse. There's also this filter cage and underneath we have another filter. Both these filters are washable. Now you can wash them in just clean running water but to get them really clean some mild detergent or biological detergent helps. Don't use very hot water, you can just leave them to soak for a few minutes, give them a bit of a squeeze, rinse them and then leave them to dry for up to 24 hours. So I'll be cleaning these filters later on in the video. This part can also be washed in hot soapy water. The exhaust filter is located behind this grill. To remove it, there's a little catch at the bottom. Simply pull the catch out and remove the front cover. And then you can just pull out the exhaust filter. The exhaust filter requires far less maintenance than the pre-motor filters, but you might want to wash this around once a year. Now on the back of this, you can see it's gone black, but that's due to the carbon dust that the electric motor produces rather than dust passing through the other filters. But if you want to wash this, again, you can wash it under running water, but because it's pleated, it might take quite a while to dry. So again, leave it for at least 24 hours if it's very dirty, again, you can use a little bit of detergent, rinse it well, and of course, leave it to dry. You might find, though, it doesn't come completely clear. It's very hard to remove all the carbon dust from these types of filter. Now that I've removed all these parts, I'm going to give them a clean before fitting them back on the vacuum cleaner. Now I'm going to show you how to check for any blockages, starting with the flexible hose. So to remove the hose from the machine, Press the hose release button here and also the handle release button at the top. Once the hose has been removed, it's easier to check for blockages. Start by looking down the hose here. You might see some debris just caught just in the entrance to the hose and again here where the handle is. If the blockage is further down, you could try stretching out the hose gently and shaking it and the debris may fall out. Now, if you put anything inside the hose, 
if you've got a blockage in the middle and it's not budging, don't poke anything sharp in the hose because it will damage it and it contains electrical conductors. So you don't want to damage the wires that are housed within this hose. Often though, you'll find that stretching it out and giving it a good shake can often clear the blockage. If the hose has got very dirty and you want to clean it, it's fine to clean the exterior of the hose with a damp cloth. Never submerge the hose in water because as I said earlier, it's got electrical contacts inside and you will ruin the hose. If you don't want to wash the whole hose, it's always a good idea just to give the seal a good wipe over with a damp cloth or a wet wipe. Another place you can check for blockages is in the wand. Simply press the wand release button and then you'll be able to look all the way through and you'll be able to see if there's a blockage. This one's fine. If there's anything lodged in the middle of this, again, you can either drop a heavier weight. If it may be a battery, one of the larger batteries, just drop that down, it might dislodge it. If it doesn't, obviously tip the battery out the other side or use something blunt but flexible to poke down the end. But often you might be able to get the blockage out just by tapping it, but this one's clear, so that's fine. With the wand removed, you can now check the blockages in the air path here. To remove the suction pod, press the lift away button and take it out. There's not a lot you can do with the motor unit in this state, but if you want to give it a wipe, now's the time to do it. Most of the dust will be located just above the motor where the filter is housed. So I'm just going to use an antibacterial wet wipe and just clean it. Don't use anything other than a wet wipe or a damp cloth or even a dry duster. You don't want to get any water going into the motor. So this sort of thing is ideal for a quick cleanup. And because it's antibacterial, hopefully it's killing any germs that may be in there. So as you can see, that's nice and clean and that's ready for the clean filters when I reassemble them later on. The last thing I'm going to check is the cleaner head. When removed from the shark, it's easier to check for blockages and to perform some routine maintenance. So first of all, again, we'll check for blockages. You can just do a visual check by looking down the air path here. This looks clear. We'll also be able to check a little bit further into the air path when I remove the bottom plate. Now, one thing I'll point out too that has been a problem in the past with some shark cleaners, I'm not sure if it's been rectified, but this internal hose here can split. It's not just shark machines. I've seen it happen on Vax machines, Hoover machines, and other brands of vacuum cleaner. If that hose has split anywhere, it means you will be losing performance and suction. If it splits within the guarantee period, I suggest you contact Shark, who hopefully will issue you a replacement. Okay, so to access the brush roll, we need to turn the head over and undo these three screw threads. You don't need a screwdriver for this. You can use a coin or in this case, a key ring. You just turn each of the screw heads to the unlocked position. And then you can remove the nozzle plate just by squeezing here and pivoting it forward. Now we've got full access to the brush roll. And of course we can check here if there's a blockage in this part of the air path. There isn't on this machine, it's been quite well looked after. Yours might be in a worse state than this one. But now, as you can see, this brush roll isn't too bad. There are a few fibers on it. But if you've got lots of pets in your home, long-haired pets or long-haired humans, you might find this looks far worse. You can use a pair of scissors or a knife and just cut along the grooves. This is what they're provided for. And then that will help release all the debris and then you just have to pick it off. Again, once you've cleaned all the visible debris off the machine, you can use a surface wipe or a damp cloth and just wipe all around this area here. It's also a good idea to clean around the seal here. So as you can see, I've given the brush roll a clean. I've made sure there's no blockages. I've wiped around the seal at the back. There's also a seal that follows the full circumference of the brush roll housing. Give that a wipe to remove any dust or grit 
that might have caught in it. Then we can just close the nozzle plate and do up the three screws. At this stage you can give the bottom of the power nozzle a wipe over should you wish. Now they can become very grubby, especially around the brush roll. You might find yours has got black or very dark brown encrusted muck all around here on the plate. Now when it builds up like that it can make the machine a little bit harder to push believe it or not. So sometimes it's quite hard to remove but persevere, bit of elbow grease, give it a clean, dry it a little bit of furniture polish over it, make sure you buff it off, can help the power nozzle to glide a bit smoother over your carpet. If you do this on a regular basis, it's not going to build up. So maybe once a week, once a fortnight, just turn your power nozzle over and give it a wipe. Okay, so here finally are all the component parts of the Shark vacuum cleaner, all cleaned and ready to be reassembled. So we'll start with the filters and the main motor unit. Here's the HEPA exhaust filter after a good wash and you can see from the reverse it's come up pretty clean. So we just need to reinsert that onto the motor unit at the front and then the grill, locate it at the top first and push down until it clicks. Now we can reassemble the pre-motor filters starting with the white fabric filter which again has come up very well. That goes first in the cavity there. And then we've got the sponge filter and filter frame. Now this has become a little bit discolored after quite a lot of use. Obviously you can buy replacement filters. If after several washes you think it needs replacing, then you can get those filters direct from Shark. But we need to pop the donut shaped filter onto the filter frame like that and put it just in the cavity there above the white filter. As you can see, I've given the dirt container a bit of a clean. I've made sure that the seals at the bottom are clean and I've also cleaned the seals around the top. It's also dry, so that's ready to put back into the cleaner. Next, I can attach the wand to the power nozzle. And then the handle to the wand. Now we fit the hose to the suction unit, replace the cleaning tools, replace the suction pod on the wand, clip the hose into its holder, and finally wind up the mains cable. So there you go, that's the Shark NV680 fully assembled and ready to clean again. If you've enjoyed this video, please thumb me up, please subscribe, click the bell icon and you'll be notified of all my new uploads. If you have any comments or questions about this vacuum cleaner, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.